Don't spend any of the coins you see in this movie, since you might make a costly error if you do. Instead, pay attention and refrain from doing so. Now, we have all previously seen these Wisconsin coins. Even though I grew up collecting these from 2004, I was unaware of their potential value. I mean, this particular coin here is valued at $6,000. Before I tell you what to look for, allow me to swiftly lower your expectations. The majority of Wisconsin coins you discover won't be worth $6,000, but the finder of this coin was able to locate it, have it graded, and sell it for that amount. What then do you require looking for? So pay attention because it's all in that corn stalk on the back. The PCGs assigned this coin a Mint State 67 rating. That is three points short of the ideal score of 70, which is an accomplishment in and of itself. Thus, there are three different varieties of this coin. Either a high leaf, a low leaf, or no leaf at all will be present. Extra low leaves are the type you want to seek for because they may be worth more money. The front below is another area to pay attention to. You'll see a tiny little D mint mark next to the phrase, In God We Trust. The Denver Mint is indicated by the D mint stamp on this A coin was made. You can order coins from Denver, West Point, San Francisco, or Philadelphia. Philadelphia coins typically lack a mint mark, although the other factories do. If you happen to have an additional low leaf coin from 2004, it's a Wisconsin quarter, and it grades similarly well by PC to this coin. Given that this coin sold for $6,000, you could have a very valuable coin at the age of 67. You may not be aware that this tiny Roosevelt penny sold for $21,150, and this is the reason, so this coin is a proof. However, if you have a coin like this, it will be worth more than the average proof coin. Consequently, this one received a at a proof 68 PCGs. Even though this coin has a lot of hue, toning, a naturally occurring process that occurs when the air oxidizes a coin depending on how it is stored, is what you are actually seeing. Now that this coin is receiving a lot of queries, let me try to clear things up. In essence, the majority of individuals will possess a coin that bears the year 1968 and has no mint mark below the date. You have a coin that was struck in Philadelphia then. I'll show you the difference right here if you have a proof coin. Proof coins have no S mint mark, and only the background or field of the coin. That identifies the coin as being of the no-S kind. Basically, it's a mistake that few people are aware of, but that's all there is to it. Now, you must exercise extreme caution because some viewers of our videos may say, hey, I'll just buy a 1968 Roosevelt dime that was issued in Philadelphia without a minimum mark, and I'll polish it to make it look like a San Francisco minted coin without an estimate mark. While the majority of these proof coins have an estimate mark, this one does not, which is why it sold for $21,150. Speaking of mint marks, this one sold for $19,800 because the mint mark was in fact repunched on it while it was moving swiftly. These have a 66 at Amens, a high-grade classification by PCGs. This one carries the mint repunched mark. Therefore, on the coin's right-hand side back, if you look extremely closely, you will see a D-mint mark. This has that repunched mint mark which can be seen if you use a magnifying glass or a USB microscope to zoom in. Its high grade and mint state 66 alone made it possible for it to sell for $19,800. Please hit the like button if you learned something from this video, and we'll see you in the next one.